Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Natasha. You might know me as Planted and Platinum on TikTok and Instagram. Today we're going to be taking a look at all of my propagations that I have going on for the upcoming plant markets that I'll be attending. Um, we're going to be potting up some propagations, watering some propagations. I'm going to show you some cute little baby plants. We're going to be making labels, you name it. So thank you so much for tuning into this week's video and let's get started. All right, so we're going to start upstairs. I have a propagation bin on my lower level of my Hoya shelf. This one has a light above it and a heat mat underneath it, so it does dry out quite quickly. So I do keep this watered once a week on Wednesdays. So we're just going to water it with a quarter strength of my fertilizer water, which I have here, and I'll show you some updates. All right, so this is a variegated scandapsis that my friend gifted me. It wasn't rooting for the longest time, but we have a root started in there. So that's pretty exciting. Oh my goodness, you guys look it's all the way to the bottom. Wow, okay, so the moss is pretty moist in there. I won't need to water this at all, but I'm not going to repot it until I see some new growth on it. So this one's good. Oh, wow. Check that out. My red Anderson is giving me a new leaf. It's so pretty. I just put out this leaf here, and now it's giving me this beautiful leaf. So I have struggled with this plant. I've had it for probably over a year now, and it just keeps rotting on me. But we do have some nice looking roots in there. So I'm not going to today, but I think maybe next week I'll pot this up. So the water level is right there, as you can see. And my root is right there. So I think I'm just going to give it the tiniest little splash of water because I don't want it to dry out from the heat mat. And we'll move along. All right, so this is my Alocasia and Toro Velvet. Oh, it's so pretty. I just love the dark foliage on this plant. I got this from Crafteria and Greens as a plug and I'm just obsessed with it. It's so pretty. So I'm going to remove this yellowing leaf. And look, it has a little baby corm growing in there. How cute is that? And we have got a ton of roots. So this plant is in tree fern fiber and pond mixed together. We still have water probably up to here. So I'm just going to give this one a little splash as well. And I think next week this one's going to get a repot as well. I just have so much to do today. I don't have time to repot the plants up here. So this is a Argentia princess, a Hoya Argentia princess. It's my friend's. I'm just growing it for her. You can't get it to grow, but you know what? I am not having luck with it either, but I've heard that these guys need to develop a really good root system before you um, see any growth. So we've definitely got some roots in there. So hopefully one of these days she gives and gives me some new growth. I'm gonna give her a little splash, put her to the side. So I had a um, Alocasia aslanii grown from tissue culture that my friend um, sold me. I did not um, take it out of the gel and do all that fancy stuff with it. I don't know how to do tissue culture plants. So she had it already potted up into soil for me. And honestly, I did not do very well with it. So I took it out of its pot. It had four corms because it was like rotting on me. So I potted all of the corms up and one popped a leaf. Look how cute that is. Oh my goodness. So I'm really excited. I hope this grows for me. But this one has no water, so I'm just going to give it a little sprinkle. 
Here's another one of those corms, and this one has like a um, brown, hard brown shell around the top. Do you see that? So I'm just going to remove that so no new growth gets stuck in there. Literally just pulled the top of it up. There seems to be another one below it, another brown shell. Let's see if we can get it off. Oh yeah. Oh good. See, there's like a nice little pink growth point under it. So something should come from there soon. I should probably fill this up more with tree fern so it's just below the green here. But today I'm just going to give it some water just because we have so much to get through. This is a baby pink princess. Look how cute that is. I got this um, in a trade with my big pink princess, well, my bigger one. And this was just like a little hitchhiker plant that came with it. How adorable. Oh, I should see if she has any roots. I don't see anything yet, but she's growing. Definitely getting a new leaf. Oh, so this is super sad. Okay, so in my first video, I was showing you guys all the plants that I acquired in 2024. And this is my variegated by Penifolium variegata. I was like, oh, look, the leaf looks healthy. Like everything looks fine. I like went to check on it and the leaf pulled right off. I was so sad, but everything looks good. Like I think we'll be able to save her. So we'll see. But most of the roots were rotted. I think that was my fault. I should have been paying better attention to it. Anyways, I just filled this up too much. So I'm going to use the water that I poured in here to water something else. Put that to the side. This is my Hoya Nova Ghost, which is the reverted Argentia princess. So pretty. Let's see if we have any roots. Nothing yet. We still have lots of water, so I'm just going to leave this one. It's fine. Okay, so this is a Florida ghost cutting that I've had in here for probably like at least four months and it has done nothing, absolutely nothing. It's not rotted, it's not done anything, it's just been chilling. So I was thinking of maybe putting some stratum in the water. Let's see if we can see that a bit better. Hard to see. Like those little root tips look pretty healthy. Maybe it is slowly growing. I'm not sure. It just looks the same as it always has. So I might put some stratum in the bottom of this vessel to see if it will encourage some root growth, but not today. This is my Syngonium Chia Pants variegated little stick I have. I don't see any roots, so I'm just gonna top this one up with some fertilizer water and hopefully we can see some growth soon. This is my Hoya golden eye cutting. Let's check to see if we can see any roots. No roots yet, so we're just gonna give it a little bit of water. This is my Hoya AH0734 that I just popped in my humidity bin. It does have paired roots in there. I just can't get it to grow for the life of me. So this one is quite moist and I don't want to rot it. So I'm going to put it back in. This here is a couple stick cuttings of my Philodendron Atabapoense. That one popped, so, oh, both of them did actually. That's two, sweet. So there's two different little stick cuttings in there that popped. So these aren't ready to be potted up by any means. They're just living in here waiting to root up. So I'm just gonna give them a little bit of water. 
Okay, so this here is a philodendron rubrosanctum platinum stick with a growth point at the end. And the bottom of the growth point is starting to turn like brown. So I'm just going to kind of peel that back. See what's underneath. Oh my goodness, how cute! We have a little leaf. Oh my god. Plants are so cool. I love saving plants. Okay, that's good. I kind of peel off some of this black stuff you see. I just changed the water out in this because it was getting kind of yucky and it's already yucky again. Gross. Okay, so I just grabbed some moss to pop this in. It does have a couple little roots along the um, stem. And I'm tired of changing the water in this. So we'll see if that does anything. Hopefully. Okay, so I have a couple more Aslanii corms. This one looks like it's just chilling. And same with this one. They're both just chilling in there. And this is the bottom of an alocasia fried egg. I have no luck with these things. I don't know why. But anyways, that's the last plant upstairs. So I'm just going to take you guys downstairs. I forgot to show you guys some little begonia propagations I have going. So this is begonia dindewii leaf crops. Ah. Oh. That's so hard to show you. It's so dry. I need to water that. I'll roll that. These live right by my fireplace, so they dry out extremely quick. Look how cute. So these are Hoya Hushkliana variegatas that I cut from my mother plant. They've been in here for quite a while, so I do see roots along the stems of the plants, if you can see in there. So it means that they're probably rooted, but I don't see any roots along the um, moss. So I'm just going to do a quick tug test where I pull on the top of the plant and if it's kind of stuck, it means that there are roots in the moss. And if that is the case, then we'll set them aside for the market. Okay, so plant one. It is rooted in there, so we're going to set it aside for the market. And plant two. Yes, it's rooted. So we're going to set it aside and put it aside for the market into the market bin as well. This is Hoya incrisata albo marginata, and it's got a tiny root too, as you can see in the water. but I'm not comfortable letting it go yet. So I'm just gonna set it aside and let it root more in the water. And then we have a couple more of those as well. So this one here is in moss, super pretty Hoya. Again, I'm not seeing any roots on the moss, so I'm just gonna do a tug test. Oh yeah, that is definitely rooted. So I'm going to set this one aside for the market. And then we have our one in water here. Zero roots. So we're going to put this one back. Maybe I should move that to moss because the other one rooted up nicely in moss. And I have a Hoya cantiana with no roots in the moss. But when you pull it, it's very clearly rooted in there. So I'm just going to put that one aside. Next up, we have a Hoya Dolitro Sparte. So this one has the teeniest root at the bottom, so I'm not comfortable letting that one go. I'm just gonna pop it back into its little cup, put its little lid on, and put it back in there. Next up, I have some Hoya Matilde Splash, or silver cuttings that I took. 
Okay, so this one does have roots, but the bottom of the stem is yucky. So it's only got up to there. So I'm just going to keep this one at home and see if anything happens with it. I don't feel comfortable letting that go. And they are all in pawn. Okay, so doing the tug test, this one does have, whoop, <laughs> doing the tug test, this one does have some roots. I just don't see them in the pond. So that one will set aside. This one too. Next up, we have some Begonia Tiger Paw Babies. So for these ones, I want to see if they're growing baby leaves. I always do begonia leaf propagations because it's such an easy plant to propagate from leaf. So generally you'll see you'll lift the leaf up and look underneath. And if there's little babies under there, then it's ready. This one is not. And this one is not either, but everything still looks healthy in there. And they have a lot of moisture in the moss. So we're just going to put those back. Then we have a Hoya Passiflora, little cutie pie. We're gonna do the tug test. Hmm. She's definitely picking moss up with her. You see? Okay. I did see her root, so I'm not sure if there's more than one, but I'm just gonna pop this one aside for the market as well. Then we have a couple of reverted Hoya Carnosa Wilbur Graves cuttings. In moss. Okay, that one is not ready. And this one is ready. So I'm going to pull this one aside for the market. I don't know if people are going to want reverted um, Hoya Carnosa Wilbur Graves China, but I'm going to still sell it at a lower price and maybe the um, variegation will come back. So that would be good for somebody who wants a Wilbur Graves China but doesn't want to pay higher prices for it. Maybe they can try to get the variegation back for a lower price. Then I have these Hoya Latifolia Pot of Gold, so the inner variegated Hoya Latifolia. And they are just in moss. This one needs water, actually. I noticed that my Pot of Gold is actually quite thirsty. Maybe it just needs a repot, but like the mother plant upstairs. Then I have these, what are they called? Hoya Biakensis Splash Cuttings. So we'll check on these guys too. So I have three in perlite, one in moss. There's no rhyme or rhythm to that. I usually just grab what's on hand or what I feel is good. Okay, so that one definitely has some roots. So I'm gonna pull it to the side. Same with this one. And I can see this one, so that one's good. Oh, and this one definitely is rooted. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to see if the ones in perlite need any water. Okay, so those ones are good. So next up, these ones are going to be harder to see, but these are leaf propagations of Begonia dracopelta. And again, I'm just looking for baby leaves. I don't see any in there. Nope. Some begonias take a little while, that's for sure. Okay, so this one's interesting. There's no um, new leaves, but there does look like there's some leaf buds forming in there, if you can see that. So this one I'm going to set aside because you can see some new growth very clearly. Oh my goodness, how cute. Same with this one. Okay. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this. So there's the top two. And then if you peek inside, there's like a little baby leaf in there. Where is it? Under this one. A little baby leaf. So this one too, I'm going to keep to the side. 
All right, so these ones are all ready to go for the market. So what I wanna do with these ones is just check to make sure that they have enough water and just check on the roots. All right, so first up is this Begonia Julau, but I'm gonna hold this one to the side because I sold one of these a couple months ago, maybe now, a month or two ago, and his melted, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna replace this one with him. And he is growing little baby Begonia Sarawak seeds, so he's gonna give me one. Like, how freaking cute is that? But this one has new growth coming in, so it should do really good and hopefully it doesn't melt. And you can see a juicy root going up the side of that cup. <laughs> That's sweet. Oh, water. Right. Just getting into the habit of showing you these cute plants and forgetting to check the water level. That one's good. All right. Next up is this Hoya sigillatus. Me remembering that I forgot to show you my Hoya sigillatus in my Hoya tour. Oopsie. I'm sure I'll find one or two more Hoyas I forgot to show you as well. But this one's good. So this is a Scandapsis trubii dark form, and it's just in a soilless aeroid mix. I find Scandapsis are quite thirsty, so I'm just going to give this one a healthy drink. Another Scandapsis trubii dark form. It's got a root to the bottom. So this is a Begonia Linam Smithii, so pretty, but this one is in dire need of water. You don't want to let the Begonia dry out. That's never a good thing. All right, and Begonias are quite sensitive to water on their leaves, so I try my best not to get water on the leaves because sometimes it will damage the leaves. Depends on the Begonia, really, and I don't like to experiment with that as much as I can. Ah, it's so cute. I love this begonia so much. All right, so this one's watered. We good? Okay, so we have another begonia linam smithii. Ooh, this one's so cute. I'm just trying to see if I have any in my cabinet because I do want to keep one. I don't, but I do want to keep one because I just have leaf props going right now. My mother plant decided to like unalive itself, basically. So I have her propagating, but look how cute this one is. I think I might keep this one. I found these like to grow best in moss. Should I keep it or should I just wait until one of my props grow and let someone have this beautiful one? Decisions, decisions. Look at that cute new leaf coming in. Do you see that little pink leaf? How cute is that? Oh, it's so hard. So adorable. I'm not sure. Anyways, it has water. We'll put it back and we'll make that decision later. Okay, so we have a Hoya pentaflebia. This is the one that sends dresses pink. It has plenty of water. We have a Hoya coriacea splash. This is such pretty Hoya. And could use a little bit of water. There we go. Hoya mirabilis, my favorite Hoya. Like, look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. This Hoya just takes my breath away. It's literally so beautiful. And it needs water. There we go. Another Hoya Biakensis splash. Does anyone else have pets and have to remove dog hair from their plants all of the time? <laughs> yeah, that one's really rooted. Okay, I'm just gonna take the lid off of it, I think. Doesn't need a lid on it. And put that to the side. And then we have a Hoya Croniana Super Silver, working on a baby leaf. 
and it's quite moist. We have a couple Hoya Quin Quinervias, which is another one that I sold the mother plant to. It's sunstress is pretty though. There is a leaf in there that's sunstressed. Okay, that one has lots of water. That one's good too. So my thoughts for the markets are like, if I have doubles of a plant, I'll keep one for one market and one for the other market. But for the reptile expo, I kind of want to just keep it to like mostly plants that would go in um, terrariums. So we'll see how that goes. Another Hoya Pentaflebia. That one's super, super pretty. Ugh, I love Hoyas. Okay, Hoya baby little Hoya Coriacea splash. Oh my goodness, I have to show you this. It's so adorable. Ah, look at her. She's so cute. And she does not need water. Or, oh yeah, her leaf, her root is sticking out of the top of the pond, so I don't want to take the cup off so that her root dries out. I have a Hoya Delicio Sparte. This one's quite sun stressed and got a little bit of damage on it from inconsistent watering, but it's fine. All right, she good. Oh, I have my prop box on a slant. <laughs> oh, no way. Okay, I found another Begonia Lyman Smith. Yeah, and that means that there are three and I can keep one because that makes it fair, right? My brain, I swear. Okay. And if anyone wonders how I price my plants for the markets, I always try to look up um, prices online and see what the current market price is for them from a couple different spots and also the availability in my area to determine whether I go on the higher end or the lower end of the market prices that I find. So yeah, that's how I pick my pricing. Little cutie, look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay, that one has lots of water. We're gonna put it aside. Oh, look how pretty this Coriacea splashes is so stunning. Oh my goodness. Someone is gonna love this. And look at the roots, like that is gnarly. I actually did a short showing five Hoyas that root easily, and this one is probably like number one. It roots so, so quickly. So we're gonna give her a splash of water. Yeah, that's good, okay. Oh, how cute. Okay, so this is Hoya Natalie, and she has got some baby leaves coming. Like how it Adorable as that. And she needs a splash of water. All right. I'm trying to burn through these because I have so many props, but I want to show them all to you guys. I have a Hoya New Guinea Ghost. This is one of my favorite Hoyas. The purple and green contrast of when it sun stresses is just magical, I tell you. So this one needs more water. Oh, I wanted to pull one of these aside for my friend, too. She wanted one. Oh, I did. Good. Okay. So, I'll put her in there. Look how cute these are. So, these are Hoya Crassa Petty, a lot of splashes. Ugh, so adorable. And these ones are super well rooted. Had these ones rooting way longer than the other ones. So, I'll just top them off with some water. I love this plant. I say that about all my Hoyas, though. <laughs> just ignore me. I love all my Hoyas, okay? Why don't you comment below and tell me what your favorite Hoya is? I'd love to know. And this is another Hoya Quinquinaria. Didn't know I had another one. Super pretty. Needs water. 
since I have so many props now, I might as well switch bins. I'll do that later though. Once everything is priced and potted, if I get to the pricing today, we'll see. So I have this table with those lights full of props and also under the table and over there. And it looks like there was a spill in there, so I'm gonna have to investigate that. All right, so let's pull a tray off the table. Actually, we'll start with these. Oh, I'll have to show you something pretty first. Oh, they're falling. The Begonia Sinbad has flowered. Surprise, surprise. This plant actually flowers quite often. But they're so pretty and dainty, and they're just like the pinkest, whitest little cutie pies ever. Begonia Sinbad is such a pretty plant. We love her. She's gorgeous. And she sun stresses pink. But she needs lots of water or she gets crispy and cranky. So we're going to give her a good drink. And then I have these Jose propagations. I'm going to pull down. I had to attach them to trellises to keep them standing upright because they didn't have any stakes. <laughs> but it worked, so that's good. All right. So Jose Buono Numero Un. Here. Mm, it looks like she has lots of water already, so I'm just going to leave her. Number two also has lots of water. Okay, so I think these might be good then. Number three, this one's super pretty. I had a huge plant and I just chopped it all up because it was way too big. Taking up too much room. I had nowhere to put her that I liked. Oh, I have another one. Okay. So then we have this one here, which is also super pretty. This is the newest leaf. But she's dry, so we're going to give her some water and put her back. She was over here. So here is tray number one that we're going to go through. We have a philodendron, Camposportoanum, super moist, we're good. We have a philodendron micans that is growing wild. I tried to air layer it to keep the leaf size, but she had her own plants. She's moist, we good. Then we have a Scandapsis Silver Queen. Ugh, that's flopping all around. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to secure this baby somehow. She needs a drink. This is my wild child Scandapsis. She just does whatever she wants. <laughs> all right, and then another Campo Sportoana is so underrated. This is such a pretty plant. It's like purple and green. Love it. The Scandapsis trubii dark form. This one's really cool. So this is Epipremnum bumpy from the Taruno series and it literally the texture on this plant. It's like rippled and raised and bumpy. It's so freaking cool. Like, I don't know why this plant is not more popular. If you like texture and like petting leaves that are hairy, you'd probably like this because it's like super bumpy and like grooved. And that variegation is so pretty. And I have a bunch of Epipremnum no IDs that resemble Cebu Blue, but they're not. They might be a type of Cebu Blue, but. I don't like to label them Cebu Blue because when they grow, the leaves do not look like your typical Cebu Blue leaf. So I've had people buy them and be like, this isn't Cebu Blue. So I just put an Epipremnum No ID for selling reasons. She good. She got lots of roots too. See that? 
and skin baths is truby eyed dark. Oh my goodness. So um, speaking of Lekka, Kevin from Hukuna La Planta started following my Instagram and liked some of my um, YouTube thumbnails that I put on there. So if you're watching Kevin, hi, and thank you. Oh my goodness. Jeez. <laughs> I almost fell off my chair when I saw that. Ugh. Okay. It'd be great if you had stopped following falling. Okay, I'm losing my mind. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, so this is an Epipremnum No ID. Another one that looks like Sebu. This one's quite moist, so I'm just going to leave it. And an Epipremnum Baltic Blue. Super pretty. Epipremnum and Scandapsis are quite thirsty, I've noticed. Yeah, so many plants are ready for the plant market, and they're both coming up. Well, the first one is next weekend, so the weekend of March 15th. It's two days on the 16th and 17th, so that's the first one I have to prepare for. And then my second one is on May 5th. So that one's a bit of a ways away yet, which is good because then I can still propagate some plants for that one and see how much I have left over from this one and go from there. <laughs> so this is the tray here that we are going to do next. Oh my God, I almost just spilled my water everywhere, but I didn't, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this is the tray that has a lot of the Pelioniana, Pelioniana repens. I love saying that. So these were water rooted and then propagated, and I'm bringing these specifically to the Reptile Expo because these are great for vivariums. Then they're super pretty. I love them so much. Look how pretty that leaf is. Oh my goodness. So I'm just going to give these water because I know that they're thirsty. My mother plant was going rampant in my bathroom, so I did chop her up. I was like, that would be a perfect candidate. Ready? This one's kind of growing wild, <laughs> growing from two different angles. That one's so pretty. I love these so much. We have this one, and a couple of the leaves are drying. I'm not sure why. Hmm. This one too. I'll have to keep an eye on this one. Maybe it's something with the roots. All right, so that's the Pelioniana repens. Then we have another Baltic blue. Beauty. I have a Monstera aurea. Propagation. It has a couple growth points. There's actually one coming out of like the cut. <laughs> That's so crazy. And then one right there. All right, and then I have a couple of philodendron Mexicanum cuttings. When I was weeding through my um, philodendron collection, trying to declutter, I decided to choose between this one and the Atabapoense. So I'm selling off my Mexicanum because I prefer the Atabapoense silver foliage and just the leaf shape as it matures. So I'm keeping a cutting of that one and then just selling cuttings of the rest of the Atabapoense and 
this one, the Mexicana. So this one has Wicked Roots, you can see there. They look good. And it has lots of water, but there's no growth point yet, so I'm not going to sell this quite yet, I don't think. Just gonna wait. And same with this one, but this one needs water. But it definitely has lots of roots. I did water root these guys before I put them into perlite. Then I have what appears to be an Adansonia. Maybe I'll bring this one to the Reptile Expo. Beauty. And another Skindapsis Trubii Dark Form. I have a lot of these. Float. And this one is a no ID out of my prop box. I think it might be a Majestic. Kind of what it looks like to me. Majestic or a Soderoi maybe. Probably a Majestic. And that one a little shoot of water. And then put these Pelioniana Repins back. The next tray we're going to be working with, I am going to need to grab a coffee soon here, I think. I don't know what this is. It's not labeled, but I think it's a Skindapsis Trubii Dark. Whatever it is, it needs water. Yeah, it was sitting beside an actual Skindapsis Trubii Dark, so I think that's what it is. So this alocasia leuca one is really hard for me to grow. Every time I water it, the leaves just like get water spots all over them. And I don't know, I have a struggle of a time trying to figure this plant out. So I chopped it down to a corm and we're gonna try one more time. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna yeet it out the window. Just kidding. I'll just give it away or sell it. But yeah, this one's hard for me. Next up, we have an Amedria Medium Silver Wet Stick. So this one's pretty moist. I'm just gonna put it back in there. This has been a wet stick for like a year. <laughs> a runner, actually. But it looks like it might be doing something. Oh dear. All right, so this was a Burl Marks Fantasy cutting and the leaf fell off. So, We'll check and see the health of this poor thing. Oh, it's starting to rot. Lovely. And it smells like mold. Fail. So I'm going to put this aside and just clean it up a bit and try again, I think. So this is from my friend. This was a tissue cultured caramel marble. I have a couple of these chopped up because they are not showing any variegation. So it's just growing, basically. It's still cute, though. And this is a silver stripe or cream splash. I'm not sure what it is, but it needs some help. Okay, so I think that this is an Amedrium medium. Honestly, I'm not even sure, and I just realized that this is one leaf. Wow. That is so crazy. Check this out. I thought that was two different leaves last week, but look, they're joined. It looks like it might be an Amedrian medium. This was another mystery drop of mine. How cool is that? Wicked. Okay, so I'm just going to give that some water and let it sit. Then we have this crawler that I can't ID. I don't know what it is. It's super pretty. And it's got good pink roots. How cute is that? So this one is ready to be potted up, I think. Okay, and this is the original leaf from the Begonia thurstonii that I got from Wildfern. I just wanted to do a little experiment and see if it would 
reshoot me some more babies from the base. We have a bunch of roots, so it's really well rooted, but no babies. So I'm just gonna leave it, and if nothing happens, then I'll try it a different way and see if I can. It's so big. Oh yes, don't forget to water the begonia, Natasha. <laughs> Too busy showing you guys. Okay, so then we have another one of these Epipremnum Premnum No IDs, and this one is a different variety. I have two different No IDs that look like Cebu Blue. And then we have some Atapapa Wednesdays here. The leaves have looked better. They've had better days. <laughs> And this one's kind of coming out of the pot. Oh, there's a growth point though. And two growth points. Okay, so we have growth points in both of these and they both have water, so we'll just leave them. And another philodendron out of Apple Wednesday. I just pulled the growth point off. <laughs> Oops, I'll just leave it. Maybe it'll do something, I'm not sure. So that one is good. All right, so I have our next bin here. You've seen a million of these um, Epipremnum no IDs. I have a million of them. This one just needs water. Another Monstera Adansonii Aurea. I have a bunch of these too. Another Epipremnum no ID. These are so gorgeous. Another Epipremnum Bumpy from the Taruno series. So textured and cool. Ah, I love this. Okay, that one's good too. Another Campo Sportuanum. It's a little bit of water. I have a Skindapsis Exotica Dapple Dude. So this is a variety of Skindapsis Exotica. It's super pretty too. She's wet, we good. And we have more Adansonii Oreos. I'll show you quick, just little wet sticks. And we have another one of those mystery crawlers, but this one I potted up last week or the week before, I think the week before, because it had really good roots and a little baby shoot coming out of it. See the roots there, they're super pink. I love pink roots, they're stunning. I don't know what it is about pink roots, but I love them so much. And then I have a bunch of Epipremnum albo babies, and my plant is super pretty. She has really nice variegation. So we have these water. And then we have another Philodendron Mexicanum. Another Epi Albo. This is a beautiful Jacenia that has not done anything for me in like a year. Look how pretty that leaf is. So I'm just keeping it. Never know. I actually might try to pot it up and see if anything happens, but we're not doing that today. Another Epi Elbow, super pretty. My plant throws a lot of half moon leaves, which is so cute. Okay. And then we have ourselves an Adansonii Aurea that possibly reverted. It's hard to tell because it's Polaroid variegation, but, and that plant is notorious for reverting. So next up I have a tray of mostly Adansonii Aureas and they are just chopped up pieces of my plant. I'm just trying to see if I can get variegation on these leaves, like this one looks fully green. This one has not opened yet. This one is just opening. So 
This one has a new leaf on the way. This one it looks like it's melting there, so that was probably a yellow spot. I think I hate this plant. It literally, it'll revert and then the, the yellow um, variegation will just crisp up on it. So if I can get it to grow good variegation for me, I think I might try and feed it silica and see if that helps. This is such a pretty one. Oh my goodness. And maybe it just wants like super high light. <laughs> Who knows? The guessing game. It's always fun with plants. Let me have that one. And to this one here. And then, do you remember how I said my mother plant of my begonia lina smithii died? So it isn't dead, but like this cutting is definitely dead that I took of it. So we'll put that to the side. And then I have this one here, but it doesn't look the greatest. I didn't know, but she had root rot, so I had to pull her out of her substrate, reroot her, and I put her in moss because I know she likes to grow in moss. Don't see any roots, so hopefully this one doesn't rot on me too. All right, next tray. This is the last one on top of the table. Look how pretty. And we have a root. So these are philodendron esmeralda dense sticks, and I don't know if they have growth points. I'm just kind of growing them to see if anything will happen because I'm weird like that. So one, two, another um, epi elbow. This one has less variegation, but it's still cute, and it's from the same plant. And I have a little tray of Baltic blues I'm just gonna water. And I think this is a Monstera Peru. It just came out of my prop box. All right, so we're gonna grab the plants underneath the um, prop table. And see what's going on. Oh, I love looking at my propagations. Propagations are my favorite part of the plant hobby. I have a serious propagation problem because I just love growing baby plants, but it's not a bad problem to have, right? Okay, so I have two baby sigillatuses in here. Super cute. Tug test, rooted, rooted. So we'll put those aside for the plant market. I have a whole bunch of white knights in here. These ones are hard to root for me. They've been in here forever, but they were just wet sticks, so I don't blame them. Look at this tiny little baby leaf. Oh, it's so hard to see. So cute. That one is definitely not rooted. Oh, water. Forgot to check to see if they need water. This one's good. This one definitely needs some water. I'll put water in there. This one isn't showing much variegation. This one is rooted, but I'm just gonna keep it in there because it's not showing too much variegation. This here is a silver stripe or cream splash. And I have a whole bunch of Monstera Obliqua Amazonas props that are just little wet sticks. So they have not, oh my goodness. Definitely not rooted. <laughs> but they're popping little growth points. So they will probably root from the new leaves. Super cute little babies just sprouting. And then I have a bunch of Epipremnum Kujang Flame sticks in here that I bought from a seller off of Etsy. They're mostly just green so far. But we're going to keep them and see what happens. This is what's left of my Scandopsis tricolor. I've been trying to grow this for like almost two years and it just keeps melting on me. So it's living in the prop box <laughs> until further notice. 
Oh, that's a dead begonia. Rip. These are begonia Linda Dawns. They're super cute. And here we have an Anthurium Eminence. And here I have a bunch of Burl Marks fantasy props that are starting to sprout. How cute. Yay. Okay. It's actually still pretty moist, so I'm just going to leave it, but I'm not going to put the lid on the whole way so it doesn't rot in there or anything. What's this? Skindapsis Silver Splash Sticks that also look like they're quite moist. Ooh, we have a rotten one that we'll take out of there, but the rest are looking healthy. This is a leaf prop of my Begonia Linda Dawn. Look how pretty she is. Wow. She's got like pink um, dots on her. She's super pretty. All right, so I took my my philodendron rubrosanctum platinum out of my tent, and then it pretty much just went downhill. So we have a stem cutting here, like the bottom cut, and it's got growth points. So we're just gonna water her. Then I have a bunch more of the epipremnum kujang's flames. All right, so I just made some more of my nutrient solution quarter strength. I feed with the General Hydroponics three-part series with Calmeg and Diamond Nectar added into it. Having so many plants, it's my cheapest option. And I really like the results I get from this. I've been using this for, since I started pretty much. Well, not since I started because I did used to use Schultz fertilizer. So probably the last couple of years anyways. I've been in the plant hobby for about five years, give or take. We have a philodendron mexicanum. And we have these begonias, which were labeled begonia erythrogyna, but they are not. I'll put the name on the screen of what I think it is. Somebody has sold one of these two, actually found what looks to be the proper ID for these. My friend grew these from seed and this is what they were labeled as when she got them, but they're not. <laughs> they're super hard to propagate. They're super finicky. And they do not like water on their leaves. I have learned. And this is a variegated Cebu Blue that I'm trying to bring back for my friend, but none of the new pieces have been variegated, so I don't know if we're going to succeed in that. All right, next up I have a big tote that was under one of my tables. And this one's full of Jose Buanos and some Hoyas and some Peperomia Redlog. So I propagated these Jose Buanos a couple months ago. And these are the ones that are taking a little longer to root. And then I have these Peperomia red logs that I propagated in water and transferred to moss for the Reptile Expo. These would be fun in a little vivarium. They just grow wild and they have red stems and red undersides. They're super pretty. My friend um, gifted me a cutting from her plant a while ago and it just grows nuts crazy actually and I'm just going to take those out for the market actually and then in my Hoya tour I showed you Hoya UT039 and they told you that I had to take it out of my grow tent because the top leaves that were on the trellis were getting burnt from the grow lights and curling so I have those cuttings in here actually I'll show you them all right, see, it's just all curled. They're not supposed to be curled like that. <laughs> Super cute though, like really cute. A little sun stressed. Oh, actually, that's rooted. That's rooted. I'm going to take a couple of these out to sell. The new growth will be fine. Just the old growth is um, curled. And this one has a little peduncle on the top that never did anything, unfortunately. I'm going to leave that one in there. All right, so 
that's a wrap for the propagations, I think, for watering. I still have propagations in my tent, but I'm going to save that for another video. Okay, guys, so now we're going to pot up a couple of propagations for the plant markets. So I have a Scandapsis Silver Splash cutting that is rooted and has new growth. I have a Hoya Dolicho Sparte cutting that is very rooted, super cute. I have another Hoya Dolicho Sparte cutting, which is also very rooted and also super cute. Oh, and it appears that the last one is also a Hoya Dolicho Sparte cutting. All right, so we're gonna pot up these Hoyas and this Indaxis. I'm in my fuzzy sock girl era. <laughs> Don't mind my fuzzy socks, they're so comfy. So I just have some cups that I'm gonna pot them in. I might go. And some moss and perlite that I just mixed up. I like to go heavy on the perlite. I appreciate it when I get cuttings that are not in straight moss. I mean, some of mine are too, but you know, we do what we can with what we have. All right, so first up, this Hoya Dolicho Sparte cutting. I'm just going to sprinkle some myco on the roots. And try to get her in here without breaking any of the roots. And just fill it up with moss. Oh no, I just got moss in my coffee. Oh, well, still drinking it. Still drinking it. Plant life. <laughs> we do silly things sometimes, but that's okay. All right. So I want to try to cover up this stem because Hoya's root along the stem and there's still some of the stem exposed. So if it could root higher up, it would just give it a better and more robust root system. Even though it already has a good root system, I'm still going to aim for the sky, right? I like to root Hoyas in water to start because then I can keep an eye on the stem health and the root growth. I don't always do it that way, but that's my preferred method and it's cheaper and easier and more visually appealing. Like who doesn't love to look at roots? Okay, so here is our first cutting. Pick that old label off. And we'll put a new label on. So I tried to order more of the white um, tape that I use for my label maker. This is clear. It's just got a white backing so you can see it. When you peel it off, it's clear. But the white tape went up like 50% in price. So I'm just using my clear tape. And I bought these plant tags so that I can just stick the clear tape on the plant tag which I don't like to use plant tags because sometimes a new leaf will come out and get deformed because it'll hit the plant tag. But here we are. So let's see. I have an old tag here. See, the Hoya Delicho Sparte. So I'm just going to peel it off and put it onto the tag that I have. This one is on my old white tape, but I'd like them to all look the same, nice and neat for my plant market. So I'm just going to use a tag anyways. And place that. Oh no. Okay, one sec. That did not go how I wanted it to. Okay, there we go. Perfect. And then I will pop that into the plant and voila. Cute. Okay. Next up, we're going to do the Scandapsis Silver Splash.
and it is rooting from two parts of the stem. So we're going to try to get micro on both of those little root systems. Oop, there we go. I should just make micro water, but I'm too lazy. I probably waste micro by putting a lot in the on the roots, but you can't really have too much micro. It doesn't do anything bad to the plant. Unless you can prove otherwise, I will continue my method until further notice. <laughs> and y'all, just use lids for your potting um, up if you cannot find your plant mat. It's so easy. Okay, there we go. Number two done. And I didn't have a tag for that, so I printed one out. This is just the Clayble Mini on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. But be aware that the tags are expensive as heck now. The tape is annoying. I swear Amazon always boosts their prices at like the beginning of the year, which is really annoying, but whatever. It is what it is. Skindopsis Silver Splash is done. All right, next up, we're going to do the bigger Hoya Delito Suerte. Look how pretty that is. So gorgeous. Okay, so. This one has a ton of roots. Mmm, moss coffee. <laughs> okay. It just had like the tiniest little flake of moss. Don't worry, it's all good. Oh, I love those roots. They look so, so good. Yes, slay. Okay. So this one's going to be fun to fill up because the leaves are literally everywhere. Okay. I plan on doing some more in-depth propagation videos, like how I propagate my plants coming up. So let me know what you think of that because it'll be so much fun. And maybe what plants you'd like to see me propagate. I know some people have trouble rooting Hoyas, so maybe I'll do a Hoya propagation video, but I think, I think I've made a lot of Hoya videos, so I might switch it up a bit. You might see an Anthurium seedling video coming out right soon here because I need to deal with my Anthurium seedlings. They need to get up potted and all sorts of stuff. So I was thinking of just doing a tour of them and then a care video, which is going to be so much fun to make. Creating videos for you guys is literally the highlight of my day. I love it so much. So thank you for being here. It's fun to have an audience. I always just talk to myself when I'm doing plant chores, and now I have a whole audience, and I just feel so blessed. Thank you guys so much. All right. So we are looking good. We've got her potted up and we're ready to go i always get to try to get the perlite off because it looks like mealies and i've never ever had mealies so i don't want people to think my hoyas have mealies chances are it's just perlite if you get a hoya for me and there's something white on it i quarantine the heck out of my new plants when i get them so that i don't get mealies ever because that would suck so much all right, we need the tag. Got it. There we are. 
Poya Delicho Sparte, or however you pronounce it. Poya names are something else, I tell you. <laughs> Number three, so our last little Poya, I don't know, oh yeah, it's got lots of roots along the stem. I was gonna say, I don't know if I wanna propagate the, or plant this one up, but we good. Let me show you. So, she has got a lot of roots up the stem, so we're good. And this is her little leaf. Super cute. Hmm, do I have a smaller container for this? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to opt for this little square dessert container, and it should just be perfect. Moss and perlite mix is so beautiful. I love it so much. <laughs> okay, so, hmm, sideways? Should we do it sideways? I don't know. Let's put a little bit more moss in there. Oh, let's do it standing up like that, actually. Then we will put our myco on little rooty roots. And I think, uh, should I pull that root off? Maybe not. Okay, I'm gonna make a little hole in here so I can bury it down further. And try to get that little root buried as well at the top. I'm the messiest repotter ever. <laughs> so I'm trying to batch film some videos for spring break because spring break is coming up next week for my kiddos. And I realized it's hard for me to film when they're home because they're so noisy. <laughs> and we have plans for spring break as well. We might be going out of town. And the kids are going to go stay at grandma's in a city about an hour away from us for two nights so that Brennan and I can do something, which will be really nice. I'm really excited to have a little break. So I'll just be stashing these videos for you guys so you don't have to listen to my beautiful, lovely children screaming. <laughs> I felt so bad in my Hoya tour video. But it wasn't super bad, so I'm sorry about that. I did not realize my mic picked up that noise. This is all new to me, so I'm learning as I go. So thank you for being um, so good with that. You guys didn't say anything in the comments, and wow, I was surprised. I thought for sure someone was going to say something, but no one did. So that was really kind. Thank you. All right, so there we have her. Oh, look, she's so cute. Ah, okay, let's get her little tag. And perfect. Yay. Okay, so we've got two Hoyo. Hoyo, Hoya de Lichos Partes, three Hoya de Lichos Partes, and one Skindapsis Silver Splash. So that is it for this little mini repot sesh. Now I think we're going to go see if we need to add plant tags to any of the other plants. So I'll bring them over. Okay, so we're going to make tags for these plants you see here. So Everything has a tag on the side of the pod except for the Hoya sigillatus and the Hoya hushkleana variegatus. So we're gonna stick those onto some plant tags, pop them in. Just like that and See if these fit in here. Oh yeah, kind of. How cute is that? <laughs> Bam. All right. 
there's the other one. So I think we're going to speed this part up. Okay, so that's everybody. So I'm just going to leave these tags on the front of the plants. As you can see, they're all labeled. All right, now we're going to water some propagations in my cabinet. First up, we have a New Guinea ghost. We have a Hoya caudata sumatra. We have a Monstera obliqua amazonas, and it's got a growth point in there. Hard to see. So it's right in there between the stem and the cut stem. We have a bigger Monstera obliqua amazonas. Oh, it's rooting up nicely too. See a root there. You can see a root there. I have four of these begonia tiger paws in here, but they're not ready yet and they're watered. Oh, I have a little alocasia black velvet. I had a quorum in my tent for months and it finally sprouted. So decided to take it out. Another begonia tiger paw. Here, I'll take the tape off so you can see better. So pretty. These are so cute. So this is begonia dindui. I have a bunch of these little babies in tree fern and pond, and they're rooted. So cute. There's just something about baby begonias. They're so adorable. Okay, and then we'll just go to the lower middle level. So these are my recent syngoniums that I acquired from Jen at Sala Floral. I see some roots starting. Hard to show you. There we go. You see? So that's exciting. Leave those in there. And then I have a Hoya Alimentan that needs water. And then we have Hoya Latifolia Snow Queen, which has a little bit of water, but I'm going to give it more because it's rooting. There we go. Then we have another Begonia Tiger Paw. Oh, and this is my Macariza variegata, my alocasia. It keeps melting on me, so I just put it in my cabinet. And it has water, so I'm not going to give it any. That is a hard one for me to grow for some reason. And then we have another begonia in dewy eye. And then on the bottom here, I have some plants for my friends. So this is a Hoya Matilde Splash, Hoya Passiflora, which needs water. 
Begonia Dracopelta, Hoya Mirabilis, cute little baby leaves, a Hoya Walliniana. And look at my cute little pot. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? I have another one of my tissue cultured caramel, caramel marbles in here that is not showing any variegation, but it does need some water. Then I have my variegated Milano Chrysum and see some new root action on there. Hard to see, one sec. See? So that's exciting. I can't wait to pot that up. This is my Begonia Dindui. It's just in moss. Hoya Manaparensis in moss. And another Hoya Latifolia Snow Queen with a new leaf. I think this one was the top cut, actually. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, guys. It was a lot of fun showing you my propagations, checking on them, watering them, and potting some up. I will be putting some footage on... Um, one of my upcoming videos of the Reptile Expo. So stay tuned for that. I'm really excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having a beautiful day. If you like this video, please consider leaving a comment, hitting that notification bell so you can be subscribed when I have a new upload, and giving this video a like. Thank you so much for being here and have a good day. Bye!